So welcome everybody to the How Can I Help You Right Now live webinar series. I'm your host, I'll be Simmons Thorpe, Transformation Business Coach, and today I am joined by MTS Kermali from eShipper. Hey guys, great to be here. Thank you for having me. Great, great. And I know we'll hear a lot more from you in a few minutes. So I want to highlight our event co-producers. So we have Startup Peel, which is powered by Startup Canada. Uh, we've got Enunciate, a uh, language testing platform, you know, language testing made easy, uh, Aldean Simmons Thorpe Consulting, which is uh, my business consulting firm, and ITS Global Staffing and Recruiting Firm. So I wanna thank our co-producers for helping us put this lovely webinar together. And I want to just share a little bit about who I am. So I'm a transformation business coach with over a decade of experience in HR operations and strategy, supporting startups, scale-ups, and small to medium-sized businesses. I've been described as a trusted advisor, from my ability to combine strategy, planning, and action to create real results. But today, it's not about me as much as it is about our guest today, Imtiaz uh, Kermali, and he is the Vice President of Sales and Marketing at eShipper. And Imtiaz has a background in corporate sales and workforce management from the UK and Middle East, and has tailored technology solutions uh, for giant corporations, including Shell, GE, Game PMG, transitioning their workforce to become more mobile. And he's very passionate. If you were here in the, what I call, you know, the three conversations that we were having, he's very passionate about technology, e-commerce, marketing, and supply chain. And he's also been featured in notable publications, including the Huffington Post, CBC, and Global News. So welcome to our conversation, Tiaz, and thank you for being our guest on our webinar today. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And uh, I have a, a pretty packed agenda to go through uh, in regards to how we can help you in terms of uh, the logistics and the supply chain world. Um, just wanted to check in. Um, did, did, uh, are you able to see my screen now or are we still seeing yours? I am able to see your screen. So if um, our okay. participants could just type in the chat if you can see Imtiaz's screen, please just type yes. Uh, you can see the screen. Okay, perfect. Fantastic. So we've got people saying yes, so that means they're seeing your screen. So all you, my friend. Okay, brilliant. Thank you so much. So Aldine, I wanna, I wanna um, definitely ask the audience to engage me as much as possible because I think uh, some of the best things in terms of how we deal with uh, information is to ask questions and be a lot more relevant. So if if there are areas that you want me to really build on and, uh, and, and, and answer anything specific, please do stop me because I think that's the key in making sure that we're all engaged throughout the series. Um, so we're going to spend maybe 15 or 20 minutes talking a little bit about online businesses, where they are today, um, and really just kind of trying to ascertain the way to find the right shipping and fulfillment company or partner. Um, so without further ado, um, our agenda is packed and uh, we want to start with just giving you a bit of an overview of eShipper and who we are. Um, and then we'll touch a little bit on shipping partners and how to look for the right one for your business, depending on which stage of your business you're in, whether it's B2B, it's online, so on and so forth. And then best practices to always keep in mind. Um, and then we'll turn our attention to fulfillment because fulfillment is an area that is becoming a lot more accepted in the industry. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the fundamental principles and basics of fulfillment. And then we'll talk a little bit about how to actually find the right one to fit your needs. Again, you know, with shipping and fulfillment, we're all at different stages within our business. And I think there are certain things that you need to look out for where the fit makes sense to you. Uh, and not every company is built for you. So you may have unique needs that uh, we'll touch upon in, in the session. Finally, we'll talk about automation. Um, and technology, which is where we come in and, and, and why we feel this is the most important part of the area and era we're in today, which is um, around COVID, around e-commerce and around scaling and how you kind of go from maybe producing five, 10 orders a day to 5,000 a day and what you need to be mindful of in terms of uh, being able to achieve your goal. So quickly, we'll jump into eShipper. eShipper is an online platform. Um, so think of Expedia where you know you want to go to the bahamas on holiday or you want to go to the us on holiday 
nine out of 10 times, most people will try and find a comparison between different flights, different hotels, and pick and choose the one that fits their criteria best, whether it's price, whether it's five star, four star, so on and so forth. But the idea is that anytime you're making a purchase, you want to empower yourself with choice and you want to be able to say that I knew everything that was available and I picked what I thought was best. So we kind of looked at the industry 15 years ago in the shipping world and said, you know what, how do we use technology to create this level of transparency for businesses to be able to pick and choose what works for them best? And I'll give you a quick example. If I want to work, if I have a package that I want to ship, I have an online store or I have a B2B store and I want to ship a product to Ottawa, for example, um, the first thing that comes to my mind is most likely postal is going to be the cheapest. And then I start thinking about courier and express when I have specific needs or timelines that I want to meet. And I tend to kind of look at one company and use them because of the perception that they're probably the cheapest. I also don't want to go from screen to screen trying to compare all these different rates and go and log in and add all my information one at a time. What I want to be able to do is have that Expedia effect. I want to be able to put my details into one place and be able to see everybody show me their rate and pick and choose what's really going to work for me. So that was the vision when we first started this organization and this brand. And the idea was how do we simplify choice and empower the client or the business to be able to pick and choose what best fits them. Because when I ship my product to Ottawa, um, it might be that the postal service today is the cheapest, but when I ship to BC, it might be that courier or express is much cheaper. And I don't want to be held down to only choosing one option. I want to be given my, my, my choices and make my choice based on what I feel is best after a calculated decision is made. So eShipper is an online platform. We don't touch your product. We're literally the enabler between your need and the people who can actually serve you. So for example, um, eShipper is a platform you would log into just like you would log into Facebook or Gmail, for example. There's no specific software you need to download. It's all cloud-based. And when you go in there and you put in the, the, the information such as where you're shipping from and shipping to the, the package dimensions and weight, we provide you with a plethora of different options from ground, express, and so on and so forth. So we become an online enabler. You pick and choose the carrier you want, and then the carrier picks up from your location and delivers. And fully tracked options are available throughout the process. One of the most important things people ask me is, so how much does it cost? It's actually free of charge. Um, so we don't have a monthly fee or a kind of you know program fee that you have to pay on a yearly basis you pay us when you ship and the way we make our money is spent between the shipment costs so the total cost of your shipment already has uh, our margins built in there so you're not paying for anything above and beyond one of the things we do really well is we assign a human being to every single account that works with us and the reason we do that is because number one we want to answer questions we want to come up with creative solutions and the most important thing is that we want to save you money. So everybody works on a different criteria. They have different size packages. They have different needs. And so the account manager will take the time to understand your profile, create your account tailored to your needs. And the idea is for us to save you money. So you're not going to pay more than what you're paying today. That wouldn't make any sense. Um, so I'll go through some of these points really quickly. So we are a one-stop shop in the sense that you can process domestic shipments your domestic US or Canada US and international. So we're a partner that offers North American wide shipping and you can ship internationally from North America and internationally into North America. So for example, if you had products sitting in Jamaica or you had products sitting across the world in the US, for example, and you wanted to ship it into your client or your own place in, the, in Canada, you can use eShipper to do that. Um, and the whole end-to-end -end cycle of picking up and delivering would be processed through a carrier on eShipper. We have 20 years plus experience in supporting businesses. And that's from, you know, me and Aldine have an idea and we're not 100% sure if we're going to go through with it to a company that is already processing five to 10,000 orders on a daily basis. They're mature and they've been in the industry for years on end. So we work with some real big global brands as well as entrepreneurs that just have an idea and want to know how shipping will work. You don't have to be a certain size to work with us. We work with all sizes. Um, because 
we've been in the industry for so long and we have over 20,000 customers. We process millions of shipments every year. And on that basis of processing that much volume, the carriers give us a volume discount. This is how we actually get a really great offer, which we then pass on to our clients. So just as an example, you might be shipping something from here to Ottawa. Let's say it's a t-shirt it's a in a poly mailer, and that might cost you $15 using a certain carrier like UPS. Because we're processing millions of shipments with UPS on a yearly basis, we get a great discount off the tariff rate, which is maybe what you're paying, which is 15 bucks. So our cost for the same shipment may be something like $10. And so we would put a markup of, you know, 10%, 20%, whatever it be, and we may charge you $11 or $12 for that shipment. So you are saving $3 from what you would have got yourself, and we are still making our money within the total cost. So you're not paying anything above and beyond that $12. Now, why is that important? It's important to note that because we do so much volume, we're able to give you the savings and pass that discounted rate over to you. Um, we're also a warehousing organization, so we have 110,000 square feet of space actually in the GTA. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, every single account has a dedicated account manager. And the reason we do this is because not every account is the same. Not everybody is going to be able to just come on board and start using us. Um, shipping is complex. Shipping is complicated. There are bits and pieces that people need to understand regarding weights and dimensions and everything else. So we try and offer a human-based service to each and every client we bring on. Uh, we also work with all the major e-commerce uh, stores like Shopify, WooCommerce, Amazon, eBay, and so on. Um, we put everything in one screen so you don't have to flip, so flip from screen to screen or put additional details in to get a quote. Um, and you get access. By using eShipper, you get access to the most reputable carriers like FedEx, Pureletta, and so on. So, I wanted to give you an overview of the company so that when we build into it, you can understand where we're coming from. So having understood the organization and how we work, um, this session is really about giving you the advice of what to look for um, when you're thinking of an ideal shipping partner. And really the kind of things that you, know, you should be looking out for when you're thinking about shipping or looking at an organization. So some of the things that come to mind straight away are looking for industry expertise and a network that doesn't kind of stop at just domestic or international. Um, a network or an infrastructure that's built to kind of look at your entire business and be able to give you support and services um, that will meet your needs. So when I say that, for example, um, you might have customers in Jamaica or in the UK or in the US, and your product may cost 50 bucks or 30 bucks, for example, on, on your online store. Now, if you try and ship internationally using an express carrier, you might pay a minimum of $50 or $25, for example. Now, bearing in mind your product costs $30, your margin or your profit's not gonna be $30. You don't wanna spend $25 on shipping and make no money or actually lose money to be able to ship that product. So there are organizations that provide a hybrid service where they'll actually take your product from Canada, deliver it into Jamaica using an express aeroplane like DHL, but then the final mile delivery on the ground is done by the postal service. So for example, there's, a, there's an organization called DHL e-commerce that allows you to have international mail options. And so when it comes to the e-commerce world, this is one of the key criteria. How do I get my product into an international co uh, country at a really, really good rate? You want to look for a, an organization that's going to support your vision and kind of understand you as a company and where you are today and where you want to be. Um, not somebody that kind of dictates to you their terms of working with you. Um, now, being carrier agnostic, what does that even mean? Carrier agnostic means that the company you work with should not push a certain carrier and say, hey, we only work with Canada Post, so you have to work with Canada Post, or we only work with Pure Letter, so you have to work with Pure Letter. You want to find an organization that is able to give you options and give you the choice to pick and choose who is the best. Um, and we, we, we kind of touched on, a, on, a, on an example earlier, which is if you're shipping something to Montreal today, Pure Letter might be the cheapest, but shipping to BC, Pure Letter might not be the cheapest. You might find that another express carrier is much better. And that's because of supply and demand, because 
one express carrier may have a lot of trucks in a certain lane, whilst another may have a lot of trucks on the other lane. So you want to find somebody in terms of a partner that is agnostic, that gives you all the options, and you are allowed to pick and choose the one that's most suitable for you. Um, what we've seen in the industry is customer service is really, really important. You know, things can happen so quickly. And if you're not able to give your end customer a, 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 an answer as to why something's gone wrong in a really good time, then people start to go online and, and leave bad reviews. Um, referrals stop, you know, you know how it is, you know, a, a bad story is told more than a good story is told. So you want to have a, a, an organization or a partner that provides you with a good level of customer service and availability when you need it. And I think one of the most key criteria, especially looking at COVID, we've seen, you know, online businesses double and triple in this short time. In fact, some have seen growth of 8x and 10x. And so they were not prepared themselves to take on so much business. And once the business started to flow and they actually started to get their products out, we started to see that some of the shipping carriers actually are now fully at capacity and there are delays of seven days or three days and so on and so forth. Now, you as a merchant or an online business or a B2B business need to be able to go back to your shipping provider and be like, hey, What's the update? What's going on? Give me some proactive information so I can communicate proactively to my client base. Um, my wife actually sent me an email today um, where we ordered some clothes for my son, who's two years old from H&M. And it's been like almost three weeks. We still haven't received the clothes. So they sent us an email today saying that due to the postal delays, um, your product is still on its way. And we're not 100% sure when it's going to be delivered. But here's a 15% discount on your next purchase. I mean, it's still disappointing that our product isn't with us, but at least they've kind of gone above and beyond and given us a proactive message to say it's on its way. And here, we're going to give you a little bit of a, a voucher to come and spend with us just as a, a, a gesture of goodwill. So these are the type of things that are really, really important. Um, you want to work with a partner that allows you to expand and grow, not somebody that's going to have you know walls built in and say, hey, we can't do this or we can't do that. You want a partner that kind of with you all the way and says, you know, you want to do X, you want to go international, I'll find a way to make it happen. Um, and I think, you know, it's, a, it's the backdrop of, of our DNA and technology is that if it's possible, we'll make it happen. And if it's impossible, we'll find a way to make it possible. So it's very important from your partner's perspective or the shipping company that you end up working with to have that go get it attitude. Um, I remember we had an example of a client in China who was sending us, you know, almost 20 tons of product on a daily basis by air. And he was using various carriers to bring his product in and he didn't have an option but to spend really big money with these express uh, companies. We were able to go and completely tailor the entire program, save him 40% by using lower priced carriers, cargo shippers, so on and so forth and then also help him on the custom clearance side. So it was something that hadn't been done in the industry. We went and got it done. It took us six months, but we saw the vision of the client. We saw that they had the volume and you know, they had a growth strategy. So we decided to dedicate resources and we worked with American partners and Canadian government to make this all work. And so you want a partner that will actually help you to, to kind of make things happen rather than just kind of stop and, and limit you. I think some of the other things to consider are always going to be around consultation um, and not just kind of saying this is what we do and take it or leave it, but actually what you're doing today might be the wrong way of doing things and actually opening up new doors and a new way of thinking, using expertise and experience in the industry to be able to help you come up with a solution that works for you. So I think, you know, the backdrop of this discussion is that a shipping partner can either make you or break you. And we've seen it happen time and time again. Um, we've seen a lot of clients that come to us from a different organization where they were doing 20, 50, 100 orders a day. And because of the shipping issues, they had to reduce capacity to 20 and 10 orders a day. And then they came to our organization, whether it's eShipper or another organization that was just able to help them scale. Um, and the fact of the matter is that you know service technology rates all play a part but shipping is important and having that at the backdrop of every thought process you have in e-commerce is really really important so 
what are shipping best practices? Um, I think the first and foremost when it comes to shipping or anything to do with logistics is I don't want to deal with it. Can we automate it? Uh, we have a lot of online businesses, marketeers, people who are entrepreneurs that come to us and say, hey, you know what? I actually am not a logistics guy. I don't even like looking at shipping. I just want to focus on product development and marketing and grow my business. Can you help me just start automating a bunch of my tasks when it comes to creating shipping labels and, and, and doing packing slips and so on and so forth? So it's important for you to try and find areas that you can automate and really bring together technology so that you're not spending time on manual inputting of data, so on and so forth. Um, one of the things we've found with you know a lot of businesses is that transparency is key if you can show the, the the cost of shipping to a client based at checkout depending on where they are based in terms of where they live or where they want the shipment to be delivered um, it gives them the ability to make a decision and stick to it um, so providing you know the real cost at checkout, for example, or upfront is really, really important. And we find that that really boosts satisfaction. It actually allows clients to budget correctly and have everything built in. They don't feel like, you know, you're squeezing them here and adding more over there. They like transparency. Um, providing delivery dates, even if it's an estimate, give clients the ability to know when a shipment will be delivered to them. Will it take a day? Will it take five days? Perception is everything, right? And if you can give them a perception of when the estimated delivery time is going to be, that's going to help them really understand and, and ensure their expectations are built correctly. Um, tracking options, I think, in this day and age are vital. Um, you want to work on having carriers that are going to provide you tracking, and a tracking number is really, really important. It's basically the simplest way to be able to provide a client with proof that their shipment is out of the door and is being fulfilled. So tracking options are really, really important. Um, there's a phenomenon that's been coming in the last three or five years, which is the unboxing effect. And you will find that a lot of people online like to show off a product and how it unboxes. Um, if you take the iPhone, for example, when you take your iPhone out of a box, uh, and for all the iPhone haters out there, I'm so sorry to use this as an example, but when you take an iPhone out of a box, um, it makes you feel some level of elegance and there's just some level of that unboxing effect that you get when you have a product that, um, that, that comes with a lot of thought process in packaging. Now, packaging doesn't mean fill the box up to the, to the brim and make it as big as possible because that's going to change what your shipping rates look like. Um, dimensions of a box are really, really important when it comes to shipping. However, you know, print your brand on there. Try and have a message when somebody opens the box, adding leaflets, reviews, review sheets, incentives for them to go online and review you. I bought a mouse online recently, and when I opened the box, it had a 10% gift voucher in there or a $10 gift voucher, in there, and it said, if you want to redeem this, go online and, and leave us a review. So those are really good points to be able to add to the journey. Um, be responsive. Um, I think it's really, really important that whenever it comes to providing a good customer service, um, you know, being responsive is really, really important, um, especially when people want to know. I, I work with a call center and 80% of the calls that they get is, where is my shipment? So the call center deals with online businesses, customer service. They become the overlay or remote uh, customer service team. And they say 70 to 80% of inquiries on a daily basis is, where is my shipment? What's my shipment ID? and so on and so forth. So just be responsive and have a really good team that's gonna follow up. Um, offer different services. So don't just offer a ground service. You know, Father's Day is coming up soon, but let's assume that Father's Day was on Sunday and I'm ordering a product today for my father. If I wanted it to be delivered by Friday and give it to him on Sunday, there is no way I'm gonna choose a ground shipping option. I wanna choose an express or a two day or whatever it is, a same day as well. Um, to ensure that that product is in my hands by Father's Day. So that's really important. It's not just express deliveries, just offer options so people have the ability to pick and choose. Um, finally, I think, you know, this is a sentiment that, that's always been said is under promise and over deliver. So if you're not 100% sure, 
don't overpromise because it's better for something to come earlier than for something to come later. So having kind of gone through the shipping side of the business, um, did we have any questions on the chat? Did anyone have any thought process or anything that they wanted to bring up? They're really quiet and captive. Yeah, I'm just checking the chats to see if there's anything else. Perfect, okay. So I'll keep sharing my screen. I can keep checking the chat for you, uh, Imtiaz, and I'll let you know if I see, come across any questions. Fantastic. Um, so some of the questions just, just on the shipping side that I get normally is, you know, how does insurance work? Um, so insurance is really, really important. Um, whether you're selling a t-shirt that's worth 50 bucks or you're selling a TV online, insurance is not as expensive as everyone thinks it is. Insurance is really cheap, actually. We sell insurance to our clients for about 75 cents per $100. Um, so if you're, if you're insuring something worth $2,000 or $3,000, it's not really that much money to spend on insurance. Because you know what, um, when you're trying to ship products that are expensive, there are all sorts of things that happen. Um, carriers can leave that shipment at the door and it can get stolen. Um, carriers could damage that shipment on its way to delivery. Um, these are things that happen all the time. Um, our claim rate, so when somebody um, ships through the issue of a platform and a shipment is either delayed, lost, destroyed, uh, stolen, whatever the case may be, the shipment didn't get delivered to the client. Um, we have a claims team that manages the entire process. So if there is insurance, we have a team dedicated just for claims. And they go to the carrier and they work with the insurance company and get you uh, a check for the product uh, amount. Now, one thing to bear in mind is that when it comes to all of these services, you know, it's something that is so important because your client is not going to let you off the hook. They've paid for a product. So you're going to have to reship a product and you want to ensure that you've got yourself covered. Even if the claim takes two to five weeks to come through, at least you've covered yourself and you've got the product out to your customer and it's insured. So uh, insurance is a big thing. Um, I know a lot of people ask, is there a minimum to use eShipper? Do I have to be a certain size or do I have to have a number of products or shipments in order to qualify to use eShipper? Absolutely not. Um, you can do one shipment a year if you like, or one shipment a day, um, or you can do 500 a day. Um, we are completely agnostic to how often you use the platform. Um, so it's really, really key to understand that we're not built for big business. We were actually, our inception and our vision to the carriers was that we want to work with small, medium-sized businesses, and we want them to scale with us. We want to give them the uh, opportunity, the service, the rates, and everything between that to be able to grow and, and really become a large organization. So just a couple of things to touch on that. Um, I will wait for generic shipping questions, but I thought those are some of the things that normally come up when, when, I'm, uh, when I'm presenting. So talking about fulfillment, what is fulfillment and you know, how does it work? So I think when it comes to fulfillment, the thought process is, and I'll actually jump to the next slide just to, just to kind of give you a breakdown of what is possible. So there's a model called third-party fulfillment, which is where you partner up with a third-party logistics company, and they basically hold your inventory in their warehouse, and then they pick and pack as your orders come in and, and, and basically put a shipping label and get it out for delivery to your, to your client. You have the self-fulfillment model, which is, you know, you either have your products in your garage or at home, and you do all the pick and pack and the fulfillment yourself. I had a client that um, started a business in the shoe industry. And I remember the day he came to us and said, I just, my wife has kicked me out of the powder room. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, I use the powder room to store all my shoes in. And she's just sick and tired of seeing it all the time. So I need you guys to help me find a place to store my product. And you know, these are the, the you, it's great. It's a great story because what he was able to do is, grow small from home and then when he saw the the number of products that he was having to hold in his home grow um, and become a nuisance he was able to find a partner so i would definitely say that you know if you're a business that's just starting out or just thinking about getting into e-commerce you don't need a fulfillment hub you need a fulfillment hub when you're ready and you want to scale because most fulfillment hubs will have a minimum spend on a monthly basis 
And most fulfillment companies don't want to be a storage facility. They want to see products come in and out as regularly as possible. So it's something to always think about and make sure you have in mind. Um, the drop shipping model is that you actually partner up with a drop ship provider. So for example, um, I want to sell t-shirts, but actually I'm buying from my supplier. And instead of my supplier sending me t-shirts in bulk for me to hold and deliver to my clients, I'll actually do the sales and marketing on my website. And every time I have a sale, my supplier will get a notification and he will actually ship out my product for me. So I just become the sales and marketing guru and I generate more leads and sales. Uh, and my supplier does all the fulfillment and workload for pick and pack for me. So that's a great model, um, especially if your products are you know, very generic and, uh, and, and, and you have a low skew count. Um, suppliers who do drop shipping love the model because then they kind of protect and, and manage everything end to end for you. Um, so just going question. back uh, a couple sure. of slides. Yep, go for it. So I've got uh, someone here uh, asking, considering the COVID-19 situation, is this a good time to invest in strengthening my business's supply chain? Absolutely. Um, because of COVID-19, um, we are seeing a new normal. And, and that's the most simplest way of saying it is there is a completely new normal that everybody is seeing, which is nobody is going to the stores or the pharmacies or the dentists anymore. Everybody is being told to do things as much as they can online. Um, dentists will only see you in emergency uh, procedures. I don't know how much they've become flexible now, but I know a friend who needed to basically get some, some, uh, some medicine and the dentist told him, don't even come to the office, just go online and order it and I'll send it to you. So absolutely, supply chain is something that is going to drive your business forward. And with COVID and the fact that people are not coming out to actually touch and feel products anymore, supply chain is everything you have. So the way you ship your product out to your client has to be, number one, the most economical and efficient, um, the most automated, so it doesn't kind of take your time and manual workload. Um, and it has to be credible because if your clients don't get their products on time, um, what will end up happening is they'll resort to putting reviews online about your service and your product and so on and so forth. So because of the time we're in, you know, I mentioned this earlier, some of our clients have seen double and triple growth and some have seen a 10x growth because they just, I'll give you an example. I have a client that sells puzzles. And, you know, before COVID hit, he was maybe shipping five puzzles a day. After COVID hit, he was shipping 50 to 100 puzzles a day. And, you know, he came to us and said, you know, I didn't really automate a lot of my product or a lot of my systems to allow me to be able to fulfill 100 orders a day. So can you help us to do this right now? Because I'm spending 90% of my time doing everything manually. How do I automate? So to answer your question, definitely relook at your supply chain and uh, your entire model. And if you feel like you're in the right place and you're able to scale that business, um, this is the time a lot of businesses online are scaling. If you're in retail, um, I'm sure you've seen a bunch of different initiatives online in the city of Toronto, especially digitizing businesses and taking them online. So if you're a retail brick and mortar, it's time to start thinking online because I think that's the future of the world. And just as a follow-up to that, uh, Intiaz, you know, great explanation there. Um, you know, the, someone else has asked, what are the solutions to tackle shipping delays? I know you hinted on that earlier um, and even shared a good way that, um, you know, best as a part of your best practices with shipping um, to notify your clients ahead. But more specifically to e-shipper, um, how, you know, what are, how, what are you guys doing in terms of finding solutions to tackling uh, shipping delays? Yeah, great question. So without naming any specific carriers directly, um, we found that two or three are extremely inundated right now. So one of them has a four day delay, which they've publicly gone out and said, and they've even stopped pickups. And the other one has seven plus days delay, meaning it's going to take a minimum of eight days or nine days to get the product to somebody who would be normally a next day delivery. Um, so what do we do in this case? We are just educating clients. So we have almost seven different carriers on the eShipper platform. And so 
the beauty about it is that the client can actually look at the stats for all the carrier delivery times and choose one that is actually doing well right now. So we have three or four different options on our platform of carriers that are not at capacity yet, that have built uh, a supply chain and, a, and, and, and an infrastructure that's allowing them to work with the capacity that we currently have. Um, so I would say have as many options as possible. Um, you know, two years ago when Canada Post went on strike, um, we actually got a lot of media attention because we were one of the only companies in Canada that offers multiple carriers in one place. And so even though the postal strike happened and people weren't able to use postal services at that time, a lot of clients ended up coming to us and saying, hey, can you guys help us with some of your other carrier arrangements and work with us on the pricing so that we can at least be a little bit more competitive? And we absolutely did that. So have choice and use the carrier's information to pick and choose the right ones at this time. That's, that's really great feedback. And I think you hit on this before, you know, working with a, a partner that has multiple options will definitely help you, um, you know, as you tackle e-commerce and fulfillment. Because a part of the whole premise of e-commerce is that you don't want to have to wait in line at the store, right? You want it conveniently delivered absolutely. to you in a timely manner. So. Great question. I'll let you continue. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you know, I think everybody is going through um, their own random things right now. So I'll give you an example. I have a young son who has severe asthma. So when COVID happened, it's like we just shielded him and kept him at home. Um, you know, I have some, some family members that have underlying conditions. I have pregnant women in, uh, in, in, in my family. And so we all decided that you know we were going to have one person go to the grocery and you know, as soon as he got into the house he was going straight into the shower put his clothes in the wash and and you know we try and protect ourselves as much as possible so everybody is taking extreme measures to kind of quarantine and self-isolate and you know we're going to come back to the winter months so people are going to go back into the frenzy and the panic and it's only right that between now and the winter you have prepared your infrastructure, your network, your thought process, and your partners to be able to deal with this in the best way possible when it comes again. Because I think everybody is pretty confident there's going to be a second wave. And even if there isn't, we're still going to be super cautious when flu season comes again. So, you know, I think this is the best time to be able to share these best practices. And I have another question, which I think is a great follow-up. So, you know, you mentioned Jamaica, which is in the Caribbean. Um, which they don't get winters. So for them, it's, it's always great weather. Um, so this, this person has asked, you know, is this the right time to look at expanding into international destinations? And uh, the follow-up to that is what kind of support and guidance can they get as a business for that? Absolutely. So one of the things that um, I want to ensure we all understand is that carriers like UPS, DHL, and FedEx are all over the world. And we work with them in North America. So anything that you wanted to potentially move from North America into Jamaica or any other destination in the world, you're going to have the major carriers who will be there to support you. Um, in regards to is it the right time to go into international markets, personally, from the experience I'm seeing in the news, everybody is locking themselves down. So, you know, the Canadian-US border is probably one of the largest trade hubs in the world. And you know, we are struggling to get humans through the border right now. We've closed our borders and they've closed their borders. Products are still going through, but it's very difficult to be able to travel into the U.S. If I had a U.S. office, which I do, by the way, I can't actually travel to Orlando where my U.S. office is and actually work from there right now. So my advice would be just stay close to the news and see how things are evolving. Um, I actually have family in the U.K. and I'm not able to go there. So if I had businesses in the U.K., um, for me, not to be able to travel to the UK for an extended amount of time because borders are locked down or having to travel to the UK and be in 14 days of quarantine just wouldn't be the right option for me right now. So I think it's really important that you always think about international markets. Um, but I'm just guessing that the, the, the kind of prelude to that question was Jamaica has great weather. Should I set up my business there or should I set up in other international hubs? Absolutely, you should, but just be cognizant of the fact that traveling to those hubs may be difficult. However, having said that, can I have marketing done in those countries and still operate from Canada? Absolutely. I mean, some of our best businesses today 
are the ones that tackle the international market really well because Canadian goods are really highly regarded. Even in the US, Canadian goods are really highly regarded because of the currency exchange, because we can save them money. But also Canada's manufacturing and just the, the idea of made in Canada or it's branded by a Canadian company is really, really important. So eShipper can absolutely serve you and support you for any international orders that you move from Canada uh, out to the world. Um, so whether that's in China, UK, Jamaica, Hong Kong, doesn't matter. We can create a shipping label for you and ship it out to those customers. Um, but just building on the question, if you're trying to create a hub in those international zones, I'd be very careful right now. So with that being said, um, I hope those questions answered a lot of your uh, thoughts. If there's any more questions, I love questions. So hopefully we can, we can interact a little bit more with those. Um, I'll move on to the other slide for the fulfillment basics. So fulfillment is really very simple to understand. Um, you have product, you may not want to have it in your home or in your office. You're looking for a storage facility, but you're looking for a storage facility that is a little bit advanced in the sense that they can actually hold your product, receive orders on your behalf, pick and pack, put shipping labels on and have the carriers come and pick up. So there are four basic components. Um, you need to have some level of integration. So whether you're a retail outfit or you're an e-commerce store, you need to be able to have some bridge where the fulfillment hub is able to accept your orders and see what's come in for the day. Um, there has to be some level of receiving and inventory management in the sense that if you send four boxes of products in, you need to be able to have some confirmation that they've received it. And when they put it into this inventory system, you should be able to see what your inventory levels are on a daily basis. Because if you're running out of a certain color or a certain skew, a certain product, there needs to be some level of an alert to tell you, hey, by the way, you only have 100 of these left or only 50 of these left, order more now. Um, order fulfillment, as we mentioned earlier, is very crux to the, the integration part. So um, your client ordered a black t-shirt, the warehouse should be able to see that in clear information. It's a black t-shirt, medium size, delivered to Montreal. They need to be able to be integrated to pull that information in. Once they know that, they have to be able to walk up to the boxes, pick up the right skew, so the black t-shirt, medium size, put it in the right poly bag or the box that you may have provided them, which is custom to your branding, for example. And then they will put a shipping label and that's your order fulfillment, the pick and pack, and then the shipping label. And then at the end of the day, the carriers will come in and pick up. Now, I received my medium black t-shirt and guess what? It doesn't fit me as well as I wanted. Um, I have the quarantine body uh, as most people do right now. No gym, no working out, no interaction with other people. Uh, I have a small belly, I'm going to admit it, right? So the medium t-shirt doesn't look good on me. I want to return it, guys. How do I do that? Your fulfillment company should be able to provide you a way to fulfill returns. So the client can put that t-shirt back in the bag and send it back to your warehouse where they will keep it in an area that they know are all your returns. And at certain periods within the month are able to open those to see the quality, if it's been used, if there's a tear, if there's a stain and be able to tell you, hey, by the way, we can dry clean this and resell it, or actually we need to destroy it because it's got dog hairs on it or whatever else. So uh, as a fulfillment company, these are the four main things that you need to be able to think of as a basic component. Best practices in terms of um, using a partner and thinking of the best partner, number one, ask them what their accuracy rate is. Because if their accuracy is less than, you know, I would say 97%, you're in trouble. Um, you need to have an organization that when an order comes in and says medium black, they're not choosing a large red t-shirt, you know? So accuracy is really important and that comes with technology. Technology is really, really important. So think about those things when thinking about a partner who's gonna do your fulfillment. Um, flexible options when it comes to shipping. So not just giving you one carrier or one criteria. And a lot of fulfillment hubs do that. They will say to you, you know what, we only deal with Canada Post or we only deal with UPS, for example. Unfortunately, if uh, you know, shipping to Montreal is cheaper with Pure Letter, unfortunately, we don't use Pure Letter, so you're going to have to use our UPS. So think about that's a really important question to have. Uh, shipping options are really important. 
And then obviously being responsive. You know, if you have a question, your customer has a question, um, just being able to have somebody to pick up the phone to or to write an email and be able to get a response within 24 to 48 hours is really, really important. A lot of businesses have chats now, so you can go on a website and you can start chatting with people without even having to send an email or a phone call. So a lot of different ways of being responsive and being able to communicate. Um, how do you save money on shipping? So packaging costs, as we, as we mentioned earlier, the bigger your box, the more expensive it's gonna to be to ship. So think about those things when you're working with a fulfillment hub. And I think, Aldin, one of the things that was great about our experience is that, you know, um, you don't just get what you're told you get. There is an entire layer of consultation and understanding the product, the business, making sure that we understand what you need before we provide you with a solution. And in a lot of cases, when we're dealing with entrepreneurs, um, we've actually said, hey, you know what, using that box, it's not worth it. You've got too much air in there. There's too much space. Why don't we do it in this way? Um, we work with a company that sells pasta sauce. And um, one of the biggest issues and complaints they had from customers was that their pasta sauce bottles would break before doing, being delivered to them. And so we found areas of, you know, being able to wrap them in paper, uh, putting air pockets and things like that in there so that at least there's cushion and there's a, a way to, to stop that or mitigate that from happening. So just thinking about packaging and, and thinking big and, and having a consultation is, is really important. Know your margin. We talked about earlier. If you're, sh if you're selling a product for 30 bucks online and your shipping cost is 25 bucks, there's no way you're going to make money and there's no way your business will survive. So just know what you're making before you know what you have to spend to make it all happen. Okay. Um, so we wanted to talk a little bit about automation and its benefits. Um, Aldin, do you want me to stop here? Are there any other questions, comments that uh, the audience had? I don't have any questions here. I'm just mindful that we are um, about 10 minutes out. Um, and I wanted okay, to also leave an opportunity for more questions if we had any. So I will leave that time management piece up to you. Yeah, I think I have another two minutes to go anyway. So we'll just finish up with, uh, with, with this, this last slide. I think we've talked about automation time and time again within this presentation. So what are the benefits? Benefits are faster processing and delivery times. When I say automation, you have to understand automation can come in a variety of ways. So the first automation is linking your store to your shipping provider. So for example, Canada Post or UPS, if you're using them directly, you can actually input your account numbers into ShipStation or Shopify and be able to automate that completely. Similarly, if you were to work with eShipper, eShipper has an app for Shopify, eShipper has an app for Amazon, eShipper has an app for eBay. So you can link your online store to your shipping provider, which allows you to bring the details from every order into your shipping platform and create your labels without any manual interaction. Um, one of the things you can go above and beyond that is to create shipping rules so that you know if a product, for example, is between one and two pounds in weight, I want to use this carrier. When you start creating these shipping rules in advance, it's almost like your AI, your artificial intelligence. At the end of the day, you just create print label and it deals with all the rules that you've created and just gives you label printers. So thinking about automation is really, really important because it basically makes it faster to process uh, your product and therefore you can actually get your delivery times shrunk because your product is going to the carrier much faster than it normally would. Um, smart automation will help you to streamline your entire fulfillment process. So from you know, getting an order to delivery to customer service. Um, and also, when it comes to automation, when you scale from five orders to 100 orders, it becomes seamless for you. You don't actually do any more manual input than you did before because all you're doing is automating as many processes as possible. Um, you know, all the big retailers are doing it. All the big e-commerce stores are doing it. So if your mindset is to become big and scale your business, you need to be jumping on that bandwagon. And we're here to support you through that journey. So you don't need to think it's too complicated. I don't know how to do it. We can absolutely support you with that. Um, so with that being said, we do have a, a few case studies that we've shared with Aldin um, that we'd love to you know, show you. They're on YouTube, so you can actually watch them on our YouTube page. Um, but some of these clients that we've worked with in the past, 
we're not just helping them with their final mile delivery. So if I go back, all their apparel, we actually brought their product from, I believe, Hong Kong. Um, actually, it probably wasn't Hong Kong, I'm sorry. Uh, from an international manufacturer, we actually brought it in by air and sea. We did the custom clearance on their behalf. We brought it into our warehouse and they actually had 2,500 orders from a pre-sales campaign that we got out in 48 hours. So, you know, from having the product brought in from the manufacturer, these two ladies you see on the screen didn't have to do a thing. They had already agreed to the pricing. They knew what the process was. All their focus was now customer service, ensuring reviews are good, and making sure that they're marketing their product so that from pre-sales to e-commerce, the journey was seamless. Um, with Lucky Eye and Fish, it's a Canadian-based organization. We actually help them with their day-to-day e-commerce orders. We actually deliver to retail stores and, and boutique stores for them, so health stores. And we do all of their Amazon deliveries for them too. So, you know, this client of ours has been with us for about four or five years. It was one of the first ones I brought on board when I moved here. And um, they're an amazing company. They do a lot of great things. And their product might actually be something, something you want to ingest. It's very good for you. Um, we also do kitting. So we had a, a project that needed us to kit 100,000 products in a matter of, I think, three days or four days. So we brought in a huge team. We created a line and we just went from there and create, kitted 100,000 units in, in a few days. So it is, it is within our bandwidth and our, uh, our wheel. Um, we do these as day-to-day projects. And, uh, you know, with that being said, I think the idea is that um, we are a one-stop shop and we don't say no to anything. So if you do have any ideas, you do have any thoughts, please let us know and we'd love to support you with that. Um, so we have a few minutes left. Um, if anybody has any comments, any questions, I'd love to be able to answer them and, and give you a little bit of a, uh, any support you need. Well, thank you so much, MTS. And I have just two quick ones, um, just being mindful of time. So the first one is how long does it take to move your business from another e-fulfillment provider to e-shipper? Um, it doesn't take long. I would say... E- yeah, I would say two, two weeks is, is, is a good timeline you should give yourself. Um, but between that period, uh, we would manage the transition and help you to organize yourself so you wouldn't be in the hot seat yourself. We'll be there to support you through that move. Perfect. And the last one I have here, um, you know, when should I start having conversations about uh, shipping, fulfillment, you know, if I'm thinking about an e-commerce store, so we talked about DMS. We also have an initiative um, that I'm supporting, which is to get 1,000 businesses um, online. So, you know, for someone who probably doesn't have any kind of e-commerce uh, in place, any, any strategy at all, um, at what point should they start having conversations with you guys if they are thinking of having products fulfilled? I'll be honest with you. I don't think there's an early time. So I have businesses that have reached out to me six months before they actually had a product in their hand. Um, just fairly because they wanted to know if they're selling at this price and, you know, $10 is 